we got Tony Barnes coming up and he's gonna be showing Run, Die, Run Again. All right. And we got Tony Barnes on the line. What's up, man? What's going How's it going? On? Good, good. It's great to have you back. We had you on the very first uh, Black Voices in Gaming, and you're back, and you've been busting out a bunch of stuff. You've been working on Run, Die, Run Again, and a, and a few other uh, prototypes. How has everything been going with development? Hectic. <laughs> like you said, man, I got... Uh... Uh, basically like two and a half games on the go and there was just uh, one of me. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And you're uh, doing 100% of this all on your own? Pretty much. I mean, I've started to enlist uh, the help of my son, <clears throat> one of my sons. I have nice. two sets of twins and one of the older ones who um, also does music. He was like, yeah, we're kind of getting ahead, but it, it run, die, run again. Um, it, there's like... Uh, you know, there's like uh, 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 kind of a, it's like a race game, right? So like in race games, you know, you have uh, music stations and, and all that. And so um, my son makes different kind of music than I do, uh, but he still makes some cool music. Uh, this B-roll does not have music, you know, uh, because I thought it, we were just going to yak over it. But anyway. Um, so he was going to be making some music for me and all this stuff, but he's been uh, messing around with Unity, which this is, uh, for uh, about a year or so now. And um, so he's kind of helping me out as the game grows and becomes more refined away from uh, the prototype that I started with. But yeah, for the most part. Yeah, you've Just, been in the business for over 30 years. One thing that I like, which, which I thought was dope and hilarious at the same time, is you did 28 days of Tony Barnes, which was magnificent. <laughs> Every day of February, Black History Month is Tony Barnes Day, and you <laughs> you had a game a day, and those were not whack titles. Like those were some dope titles. Can you kind of shed light on a little bit on your uh, history for folks who don't know about it? Okay, yeah, so uh, Tony Barnes uh, has been doing it. Actually, this will be the 36th year professionally um, that I've been making games. Wow. And uh, yes, yeah, so I started in, uh, uh, well, I started in 85 professionally, but before that, um, I was in sixth grade, which was, uh, when the hell was that? Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Long time ago. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so. Uh, you know, they put computers in schools and uh, Apple IIs, actually, and nobody really knew what to do with them. And, uh, you know, outside of playing Oregon Trail and shit, so, uh, or stuff. So, um, I said, yeah, I know how these things work, but I didn't really know how it worked. Uh, but I learned really quickly because uh, it was faster and easier to animate things on the screen than it was what I was doing, which was doing like a uh, straight up uh, pencil, you know, like old school 2D animation. And then I was doing, um, uh, I was doing like, uh, uh, you know, a lot of, I, I wanted to grow up to be an animator and um, sort of make movies like Ray Harryhausen, you know, uh, Clash of the Titans and all that fun stuff, mm -hmm. doing stop motion. And along come the computers and it was like, oh, well, I can move stuff faster. Hey, people like playing and stuff. So I'll make my Pac-Man, I'll make my Space Invaders. And people really liked it. And I was poor. I was like dirt poor. So uh, I would make these games and then I would sell them to kids at school. So I got lunch money. Wow. And so that's kind of how it started in sixth grade that's when I was 12. Crazy. And then professionally, uh, when I was like 15, um, I had uh, done some stuff on a friend's Atari. And uh, it was more like a friend of me, really. You know, like a, like Cartman. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he was one of those guys that uh, had everything, didn't appreciate it and all that, and was happy to 
have me over so he could show off everything that he had. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, I would, I would write on binder paper my games, you know, and I would write down um, all the sprites and everything. And, and then I would walk over to Homeboy's house and I, I would take his crap telling me, you know, how much better it, uh, than me he was and all that fun stuff. Now I wasn't going to be anything uh, from making these little games. But then, haha. <laughs> Here I am, <laughs> 36 years later. And the last time I saw him, boy, um, uh, he was a petroleum expediter. I mean, I got nothing against people that, you know, work at gas stations and all that fun stuff. But, you know, if you're going to puff up your chest and tell me I'm not going to be anything, um, the next time I see you, you shouldn't be, you know, filling my gas tank. <laughs> Just Damn He's throwing shade on the stream. That is a, that is so amazing. Uh, you said sorry. petroleum you know, expediter. Petrol. <laughs> I've never heard. I have never that, heard that. That, that was like that's, that's awesome. that was I'm very gonna use colorful. That one. I'm gonna steal that. So how did you? So you like fast forward to AAA. You did so much stuff in in AAA and working with like uh, at big companies and stuff. Can you talk a little bit about that and how you transitioned into indie games? Yeah, it's crazy. Um, uh, I always looked a little older. Um, oddly enough, I don't, people tell me I look younger than I, I do now. But, but like when I was younger, I looked older. So I could get in the bars. And there was a bar you that... You got that... Land, real quick, you got that Lando look. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Thanks. That's good. I like that. You know, back in my day... Seriously, though, there weren't, there weren't many... There weren't many... Um, uh, role models for uh, for my gen, you know, uh, uh, people nowadays, 90s babies, you know, grew up with a whole bunch of people on the screen and all that stuff. And we're just now getting into games and getting more black faces on, on screen. But really, when I was growing up, there was um, Billy D, you know, Sexy Lando. Mm. And um, uh, there was uh, 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 the dad from Good Times and uh, Jefferson. <laughs> so that was... That was it. So, you know, James you saying that I got the Lando thing, I'm, I'm, I'm cool. James. It. So, uh, so yeah, I, I, I was in this bar, and uh, so were these other guys that were around my age. So none of us were supposed to be in that bar. Come to find out, um, we were all like Prince fans, and Homeboy had a company that he was starting up called Visual Concepts, and was like, oh, you should come with us, and all this, and do this. And then I didn't really go with Visual Concepts, uh, but so we kept in touch. And um, I told you I had two sets of twins. So one of the, the, the sets of twins came um, in uh, 1990. And, uh, you know, you can't just be out there um, kind of living from paycheck to paycheck, uh, doing spec work and all that fun stuff. So I needed to find a real job. And uh, he introduced me to people at Electronic Arts who were looking for somebody that could program, maybe do a little art and definitely design. And I said, well, I can do all that. And so I joined uh, EA and worked on a handful of things there, like uh, Madden and um, this little That's thing nice. called the Strike Series that people may have heard of, and General Chaos, and um, uh, I don't know, any, it, like anything action-wise that was going on um, in the early 90s, I uh, probably touched, um, you know, tested or worked on. And uh, that was like my serious introduction into AAA. Before that, I worked, you know, with companies doing spec work or did some entertainment. But, you know, EA was my my AAA school. Uh, and what EA is um, really good at teaching you, at least uh, certainly back then, was um, how to uh, scope and hit dates. Because back then it was like, um, here's a line in the sand. And um, here's your box. Make your game that fits in that box, right? Uh, versus a lot of stuff nowadays is, oh, I've got an idea, and then you just kind of plow forward, um, yeah. fleshing out the idea. And, and, and the problem with that, especially for AAA, is that things are costing you know like two, three hundred million. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. you can't really, you can't really uh, work that way. But it teaches you some discipline. And so, uh, yeah, Electronic Arts, uh, Crystal Dynamics, you know, worked on Legacy of Kane and uh, worked on a bunch of their stuff while they were transitioning from the 3DO and the Saturn to uh, PlayStation. So did, you know, like testing and stuff on Gex. And, and um, then, let's see, um, 
I don't know. It's been so much. Uh, Medal of Honor, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Star Wars Episode Three, um, uh, Strider, <laughs> Strider 2014. Strider, yeah, uh, super dope. That was one of my faves. Um, yeah, you talked about the 28 days, uh, 28 games. I I woke up to Black History Month and said, hmm. You know, uh, and, and I, I just said it to my wife. I said, you know, I should just do a game a day. Um, I should pick <laughs> out of the the 60 some odd titles that I've done. I should just pick a game a day and just for fun. We need, we need a 60 uh, do that. day month, Black History Month. Well, she's, you know, <laughs> wow. she's my biggest cheerleader. And she's like, you know, um, why are you gonna stop at 28? You know, she she gets mad when I when I down myself. You should myself do two whatever. months. You should have it bleed into March. I think that would be actually pretty amazing. You just, you should just drop a 30 more days, son. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, well, we'll see. But you know, I'm a little a little busy. Like I said, uh, two and a half games and uh, just the me for the most part. Um, and yeah, like uh, Run Die Run Again is. Um, in transition which is why i uh i couldn't get you guys a uh a playable because i broke the game um but i broke it for good for good reason it's it's going through transition and gonna be uh yeah we're dying to play it yesterday uh, we showed it on game changers with twitch and um cup of noodle was like she really wanted to play the action you know um action paced Uh, runs and stuff so we can't wait to get our hands on it it, it's um, um what would you it's say a fun is, game yeah okay. sorry go on no go ahead. i was i was just saying what would you say is the like biggest misconception of people trying to get in this industry of like making games and building games like people think like oh i got an idea for a game i can that's that's your game. number one uh so there's uh two things we'll, we'll we'll start with the number one real quick which is um that i have an idea right and I say this a million times and I'll say it again, ideas are free, but execution costs. So everyone has an idea, um, but it's important that you can actually execute on that idea, that you can decide this fits the idea, this doesn't fit the idea, and what it takes to actually make that idea into something you know that you can actually see and play and touch and hand to people. Um, so, it's not just about the idea. Uh, a lot of a lot of my contemporaries get mad that I, I they think I'm downplaying the idea. Ideas are great, but like I said, everybody's got one. And I come up with ideas. I don't know. I, I can be walking down the street and look at a, a crack in the cement, and I can come up with an idea. But that you know, you have to <laughs> make it right. I want to play that. And game. that's the other. <laughs> <laughs> the other. The, but like the other, the other misconception is that making games um, is easy. It, 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 people think that it's either easy or they certainly think it's easier than it actually is. It's super hard to even make yeah. Space Invaders, and that's why I tell, I tell anybody that comes to me and goes, uh, I want to make games, or you know, my kid wants to make games. Uh, what what advice do you have for them? And I say, finish something, make something, mm-hmm. um, and make something small. Take your smallest idea and cut that in half and then realize that you're only going to get half of that done because, like I said, make games is hard, right? Uh, If you're making it by yourself, it's exponentially harder. Uh, Getting people together helps, but then there's a management of people and kind of driving everybody towards a singular goal. So there's so many moving parts. Um, It's best to minimize the amount of moving parts that you have. Yeah. Uh, so that you can get in there and get her done. Uh, somebody else on the stream uh, said, um, you know, don't uh, try making your your favorite idea first or whatever. Uh, and uh, and I'm totally paraphrasing. And I'm sorry. Yeah, I was but- gonna say just real quick, like Adam on the last stream, he did the Sonic prototype, then he did the Mega Man prototype, and then he went into Proto Droid uh, Delta, and that's exactly what you're you're saying he's like let me just build some stuff and then i'm gonna go from there i want to kind of loop it back into run die run again so you're talking about building that that prototype how did that get you into um 
moving towards building Run Die Run Again and then like actually starting on like uh, full production? Yeah, so you know, I mean, um, I was in AAA. I was working on some stuff. Um, I was working at Amazon, and um, eventually, the game that uh, one of the games I was leading up, um, New World, will eventually come out. And I hope the best for my team and all that fun stuff. But you know, I have all these ideas, and they come at me really fast. And um, I just want to make them right. But especially when you're working for a big company like Amazon, they don't really like you spending your time making somebody else's game or making you know your own game it's like no you work for us so make our game so i just put this stuff on the shelf um and then uh, last year i was just like you know what i gotta do this um i i and my wife's like it's time and my family's like it's time you just gotta you gotta go out and and, and do your thing nice. so i'm sitting there going okay i have all these grand ideas right even i even I, with all my advice, I, I have these grand ideas and I have my magnum opuses that I want to make. And then I have other things that are really just about kind of experimenting and with ideas. And um, I love running around in Destiny. I love the way everything looks when I'm running around Destiny. I love all these movement options. I love shooting through the gun too, but I didn't want to do all that. I was like, what can I do that allows me to run around like that and then i also love platformers and you know games like super meat boy and stuff that are um a little hardcore um i don't like the super hardcore but i like um i like tough ones this footage is not making it look tough by the way i should have probably died more often um <laughs> but uh you know so get all these things together and i think to myself well, what can i do right um, regardless of my years in the biz and all that fun stuff and what I can do, uh, you know, artistically and musically and all that, it uh, there's still a lot of things I can't do. Um, and uh, so animating is not my forte, even though I wanted to be an animator. So animating people, not my forte. I was like, all right, first person, I don't have to animate people. Um, platforming. You know what? Uh, people are getting to the point where they can actually platform in 3D. Uh, so I want to make this. This thing used to actually be called uh, Super Meat Boy First Person for the longest time, and I just kind of started it that way. Now, that that goes counter to here's the box and fill in it. That I learned from EA, uh, but that's part of my being indie now. Uh, me being indie, I can just go. You know what? I got an idea. And and just you know, you know as long as I can uh, pay the bills, I can embark on said idea and, and explore it. So I wanted to um, explore moving around the space, um, you know, dodging things, it being a bit hardcore, um, and and kind of working on chaining together moves and building up momentum. So what you're seeing is actually sort of uh, my prototype of that. Now it's probably prettier than most people's prototypes um but that's also because i really like to do environment art and stuff so how did um, you, whenever yeah uh, i was just gonna say how did you add uh, diversity to the game culturally so uh one of the things uh, which actually in this footage you've got the cyber hands but um you know all of the character there's a there's a set of characters that you can choose from and they each have their you know they're each diverse i think there's a hint of it in the um at the end of the trailer you see a woman and she's she's vaulting over something and she's a black woman and all this and like she's uh, when i look at the characters and uh, what i wanted to have in there i was like okay i'm not gonna I'm not going to purposely have a whole list of uh, boxes to check, like, oh, got to make sure we have this covered, that covered. Um, it was the opposite. It was, oh, good. I don't have to do anything. Um, the only thing that I know I'm going to do is yeah. I know I'm going to put on a diverse cast of characters because if I don't, who that, who is? You know, I mean, like, I've worked on stuff where it was like, no, you, you know, you got to put this person in there or, you know, working on somebody else's... Um, IP, uh, you know, I, I couldn't make the Mace Windu game. I had to make the Anakin and Obi Wan go at it game. Yeah. Um, so in this game, there's characters, 
and each character actually has their own set of movement. So like, you know, some of them have double jump or triple jump. Some of them have kind of like a Princess Peach jump where you jump and glide. And, uh, you know, some of them have like time stop and all that. And they're kind of all, it's all kind of tied into the, to the character's character. You know, what, like characters that aren't um, typical. Like, you know, I, uh, the, 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 the woman that's a kind of spokesperson uh, that's on the, the end of the trailer, her name's Nessa. Um, she looks like uh, like a real black woman, you know? She's kind of thick because <laughs> I don't think yeah. there's enough of that. I, I yeah, really don't. Right. And, and yet, right. yeah, and she's not... Um, none of my characters are running around in, uh, with their midriff showing and, and all that. And it's yeah. not... I, I'm not knocking any game that does that. I'm not saying that I, I won't have a game where, you know, some woman's running around in the bikini or a guy's running around with no shirt on. I might, you know, who knows. But to me, if it doesn't fit, it doesn't fit. Yeah, you This is supposed like, to be this. That in. Nah, it's supposed to be an intergalactic uh, contest, right? Uh, set in, like, you know, some crazy far off sci fi world. Um, why the hell would somebody be running around with their, you know, with their shirt all down here and Take all this out. with, <laughs> right? <laughs> but you can make characters that are appealing yeah. and, and realistic looking. Yeah. So, yeah. well, thank thank you so much, Tony, for for hopping on board. Where can we find the game and look forward to having it? Uh, so, and such. so RDRA is uh, there's a Steam page um, which I think you guys are linking to in in all of this. Um, yeah, the media you can check it out. Media Indie Exchange. Uh, it's yeah. on Steam. We have a whole page that you can wish list, you know, or buy some of the other Bam. games. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, and um, and you can check out um, all kinds of information on RetroNinja.com about me and the games going forward. Uh, I uh, uh, Run Dice uh, going to be towards the end of this year. Okay. And I have another game um, that we really don't have time to cover and all that fun stuff. Uh, but, it, you know, it's a little we, more... We are going to have you on multiple times, so you don't have to worry about... <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, yeah. But yeah, thank you so much, Tony, for, for jumping on board. The Triple OG Retro Ninja <laughs> Run Die Run Again. That's right. I want, I want, I want, a, I want that uh, early demo, though, brother. Come on. Oh yeah, no, no, I'll, I'll, I'll hook you up. I just, yeah, it's just timing. I, I started yeah. ripping into stuff, and I was, and then it was like, you know, and I understand you guys. You don't want to, you don't want to get a build the day before, and then have to figure it out. So, yeah, yeah. Um, well, we're gonna play. It my soon. bad. Yeah. No, yeah. No, but we're, we're ready. All but right. thanks, thanks for having me, and you know, always, I'll, always. I'll, I'll, and, thanks, and I, and, and it's crazy. Well. The, thanks for the advice. Oh, yeah. No great. problem. All right, man. And the games, the game stuff, all the stuff you guys are showing is awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah, thanks for your support. No problem. All right, all right. And that was Tony Barnes with Run Die Run again. Go ahead and wish list that.